The Coldness on Shaw Road, written by Jared Neely, Chapter 1, The Road Home. The doors were opened as Sam Wright shook hands with the people leaving. He watched them while he leaned against the glass doors holding them for the others. He belonged to the congregation there. He was a pastor, but had only been for a short time. The life change had brought him closer to the Lord than he ever thought he would be. He had grown accustomed to seeing the town people there, although the faces seemed to never change. He stood there watching wearing a black robe and holding a Bible in one hand. He had permission from the higher power to teach his own ministries, and he liked it that way. He enjoyed teaching the lessons he had learned. It reminded himself of his childhood. Sam Wright was in his late fifties now, but he did his best to constrain his youth by using the Lord with every chance he had. He was unmarried and had never been. Although, as a child, his parents didn't worship or belong to anything other than the American Legion, he inclined himself to his beliefs. His parents were atheists and they were severe drunks, but it didn't stop him from what he felt was right. Sam stared himself turning towards the cars pulling away from the church parking lot. He was delighted with everyone's attitude as they left into their vehicles, noticing how buoyant and cheery they looked while leaving. Seconds later, he found himself there standing alone as he turned heading back inside. He took his light brown coat from the rack it hung on and reached up top grabbing a tedious tan hat from the hanging shelf just above the coats. He snugly placed it around his head hiding the baldness. He left the office hastily, wanting to get back home, hopeful to finish up some of the chores around his property there was grass to cut down. He enjoyed the labor. It reminded him of the biblical times when things didn't transpire so easy. Sam had gotten into his car not knowing the small town where he had spent his entire life was on the verge of total distinction. The sun was a fiery ball low on the hills consisting of fire burning brightly over top of Mansfield. The town was now absorbed and unsuspecting that deep in the heights something had landed there, something devious and dark and unseen as it lay its crafty hands above the town, holding the residents underneath as if they were now trapped inside of a small globe. The energy of darkness would soon cover all of the space above the old town below. It would quickly change there for the worst in Mansfield, with its already mini population. The town was forgotten by many over time, and was remote, as it positioned itself along the hills in open land. Up above, some kind of dimension had opened a doorway there, as if time had secretly ripped a hole in space, allowing beings of foreign lands to quietly overtake the town and its people. The visitors were not of this world, but were there now, and only had one evil endeavor. Just a few miles away on the other end of Mansfield, Jimmy Blanche glanced around, surveying the sky above him. The weather was subtle, but there had been reports expecting rain showers later that day. It was said that a brief period of precipitation would occur, but it was expected to be later that evening. Jimmy watched as buses lined up with eagerness to pull away before the others in a race to get all the kids home. Jimmy heard some of the engines start abruptly. He could hear the anxiousness in all of the kids who were already piling on, joyfully laughing. The kids riding them seemed excited. Jimmy could hear them hooting and hollering from within their seats. One bus driver was still standing beside a bus that seemed to stall out. He could see his expression as he stood on the grayish walkway leading out from the school. The man was in his mid-fifties and was wearing a badge with his name upon it, David E. Jimmy didn't know many drivers. He mainly rode on the same bus every trip. Jimmy gave the man a friendly hand gesture knowing the man's bus had died. He felt compassion for the man. He looked well overworked. The man began talking on the hand radio he held trying to radio in another bus for the crowd that weighed inside. Jimmy was just glad it wasn't him. He noticed the wind was calm and the clouds were white as cotton fields at that very minute. He was just yards from the river bank. The Montgomery High School was built in 1965 and still stood to this day. 
The school had not changed much over years and had never been modernized. It sat directly catty corner from where the National River ran. On most beautiful days, the town's local fishermen would park along there with their fishing gear and fishing boats. It wouldn't take long for them either to have them unleashed before the students were let out for the day. There was a fenced-in area where Mr. Johnston lived and had a wild herd of black stallions. Jimmy could see the horses beyond the fence. The rambunctious horses were galloping from one side of the property to the other, and they seemed very quick as Jimmy watched from the distance. Jimmy Blanche stood for a second, taking in the scene. His eyes were tracing across the overstretched highway, catching his breath for a short moment. His day had been long and futile. Jimmy was certainly glad his day in school had ended when it did. He decided to walk home from school. He was irritated with something his friend Jesse had said just earlier. Jimmy figured walking home would help him in some sort of spiritual way. His backpack was up on his shoulder as he walked heading towards town. Jimmy thought quietly to himself knowing some of the kids outside now were watching him. He knew for them seeing him walk home was more of a rarity for him. He didn't do it routinely. The bell for dismissal had just sounded a short minute ago as he stepped from the walkway into the front parking lot. He murmured to himself about Jesse, which had urged him to walk even faster towards home and further away from school letting out. The short distance it took to get home wasn't far by all standards, so he kept moving. The distance wouldn't have mattered to him either way at this point. His stubbornness was driving him at this point. Jimmy rode on the bus most days with his friends, but mainly to catch up with them. He enjoyed the gossip and listened closely when his friends spoke about their school day and what he had missed in other classes. Today was just one of those rare occasions where he just needed a time out from it all. Jimmy Blanche had enough of the hustle and bustle. It was the childish games at that point that stared him to walk. Jimmy had it up to his sensitive ears with it already and wanted to find his peace of mind. He stopped for a second to remove his headphones from his bag. As he pulled them from the side zipper, they dangled in his hand for a second before he put them into his ears. He took a quick observation of his own as he watched the sky, hoping to himself that it wouldn't start to rain. The clouds looked piercingly clear, but there was darker ones in the near distance. The darker ones gave him the notion that told him otherwise. The small iPod was still in his hand as he continued walking. The bus passed by him, full of screaming peers. He could hear one of them shouting his name from within the half-opened window, but couldn't make out who it was by the time the bus disappeared from within his view. Jimmy wasn't bothered by it as he regrouped, needing the time to himself. He was now listening to his favorite rock band, and it was calming after the rough day. Jimmy had the tuning knob maxed out now. It was playing crisp and loudly into his ears as he sang along quietly to himself. He listened to it as if he was there, and as if it were a live show in front of a screaming audience. Jimmy pictured himself as he listened to the guitarist, imagining himself as him. The heavy chords were slashing, filling his ears with electric delightfulness as the band wail. The music he loved so much had entered him now with a mixture of perfection and darkness. In Jimmy's own judgment, the band was the only one he had ever heard play such a melody. He was now beginning his conscious journey into sorting out the damaging thoughts running across his fragile teenage mind. They were still bothering him, keeping him on edge, although the walking seemed to help a little. Jimmy enjoyed the outdoors on most summer days. He made being outside kind of his own religion when things were not the way he'd liked or the way he thought they should be. He walked steadily for another few minutes, but not in a rush, as he kicked stones with his sneakers with every step he took. He made a quirky game of it as he walked. He kept to the side of the old highway because heavy trucks were known to blast through as for punishing it. The street was narrow and unpainted, and it was left with potted holes. The road had been abused for many years and still had its own original concrete from when it was poured many years back. Jimmy took notice of it and watched the craters as he walked past them. They were now forming, leaving the ground now sinking in. Jimmy sensed it was just another accident waiting to happen. It probably only taken him 20 minutes walking or so, although he wasn't timing himself as he could see just beyond him the next road up was now in his view. 
Jimmy could see the street sign from behind a tree branch that had fallen and had blocked it. The street sign was discolored, but seemed to be once painted a light green. Though it had lost its lack over time, the sign still held its purpose. Jimmy could see it as he closed in. Its paint had evaporated like everything else in the town. Many things in the town had reminded him of it. He walked up to it using his one free hand as if to hold on to it. He did so as if to hold himself up as he fixed the back of his sneaker. The sneaker's heel had worked its way against him, leaving it sore from the short walk. He observed the street sign once again which read Shaw Road. Jimmy recalled a story he had once heard about the street he lived on, but couldn't remember what it was about. He only knew that something tragic had happened there years before. Whatever it was seemed to be lost now. A little while back, Jimmy had heard some of the local kids talking of it, but they didn't seem to have their facts straight on what really went on there. The tale he did recall was short and twisted, and every time another kid would talk of it, something new would end up being added. Jimmy let go of the rusted pole attached to the sign, causing the sign to shake. He continued to walk along the road not far from his house now, and eyes view he could see the abandoned farmhouse as it stood there ramshackle and torn. When Jimmy was young, his friend Jesse and him would play there sometimes. It never seemed airy then, but now looking back, he didn't think it was something that crossed any of their minds at the time. He was closing in on his house as he stumbled on a small stick along the road but didn't fall. Moments later, Jimmy had reached the final driveway which was his. Jimmy turned for a mere second to grab the mail from the box. As he opened it, he took out the small pile of envelopes, which were rubber banded together. His father hadn't checked it lately. He does that. He searched inside to see if he had any mail, but didn't. Suddenly, from the corner of Jimmy's eye, a bird flew up and landed on top of the box, catching him off guard. It didn't scare him, but surprised him enough as he dropped the mail onto the ground below. It was definitely not what he expected from a bird. A black crow, if that. Jimmy quickly but quietly took his headphones out, popping them from his ears. He sneaked them back into his bag as softly as he could, trying to limit the noise. The crow stood there straight, soundless, with almost a colorless look upon its face. Its blackened feathers were a bit ruffled, spread apart as if something attacked it or scared it towards near death. It was making a low squawking sound as it perched along the metal mailbox. Its feet were pacing from one side to the other, gripping it, as if it were trying to tell Jimmy something important. One of its legs had a short scratch, wounded along its nail where a tiny portion of blood was now beginning to drip. The black ruffled crow continued to move around as it clung tightly. It hadn't stopped moving around as Jimmy approached it, walking over to get a closer look. The crow was just glaring at something as if it could see something he couldn't. Jimmy's heart had started to pound harder not knowing what it could see. The growing wonder had filled him now with intriguing thoughts as he watched it. Again the crow started to squawk distinctly from its trembling beak as its mouth opened and shut bringing its tongue out. The sound was shrilling and that a pure terror and Jimmy seemed to be its last worry. He tried to align himself with the crow, fighting to have the same view as he got closer. Jimmy looked outwards into the view of the crow, but the only thing he could see was the abandoned house he passed and Paul's house. The strange crow had its eyes busy on something and not on him. He tried to figure out its point of interest, but couldn't. Somehow it wasn't scared of him, but almost as if Jimmy had comforted it being there with it. Its eyes were deep black. Its pupils were harrowing with straight blackness and had the depths of blackness that only a creature can see, a wild creature. The black crow fixated itself on whatever brought it there and began to pace even faster from side to side. Its large nails began making a strange scratching noise along the top of the mailbox. Jimmy looked in the same direction as the crow, but didn't see anything. Maybe he was wrong, or maybe the strange crow was afraid of something he just didn't know enough to figure it out. Jimmy then reached down to get the mail he had dropped moments before, leaving the crow there as he walked off. He looked back a short second later to see if it had left but hadn't. It was strange to Jimmy. 
Chapter 2 Daydreams and Nightmares Jimmy laid in bed with his books at his side, realizing his father wasn't home. His father must have been working late that night. Jimmy knew how things were tight and money was even tighter. They were behind on their finances. It felt nice laying there flat on top of the bed. His legs were tired from the walk, needless to say. Jimmy's room was old-fashioned and had a cozy atmosphere about it. His bed was an old military one with an iron headboard that had engravings around it. Jimmy stared at the engravings from where he lay with his hands, now propped up behind his head as he lay on the pillow. There was a man with a rifle marching beside his fellow soldiers. The picture gave Jimmy an idea for his next drawing. He spent the last summer off fine-tuning his art skills, and even tried publishing one in an art magazine he had received by mistake. His great-uncle had given him the bed just before he moved out years ago. His uncle told him it was his when he was a young kid, and that his father also passed it along to him. Jimmy liked the idea of that, and that it had a traditional story behind it. He collected old military things and artifacts from the Civil War. His grandmother would take him from time to time to flea markets. She would often buy him anything he could find relating to his hobby, as long as he didn't tell his parents. It was their own private secret. She liked to do things like that for Jimmy because she knew he was the only child. She also knew he spent a lot of time in his room after school, especially when his parents would fight. He guessed it was her way of keeping him busy, giving him something else to think about during their feuds. Jimmy hated when his parents had their all-out wars. Jimmy's parents separated a year before and his father kept the house because it was originally left to him by his side of the family. It was a long dispute to who had the rights of the house, but after much dispute between the two, she sided with him. Since she moved in with her new boyfriend outside of Mansfield, Jimmy honestly didn't see her as much as he would like after the separation. The divorce had hit him hard, and even though it's been a while, he still needed time to adjust to her not being there. Jimmy felt alone now and had to deal with his loss the only way he knew best. He would read comics often and fantasize being somebody else. Somebody who had special powers and somebody who didn't have the troubles he had. The divorce didn't seem to affect his father as much as him, or at least it didn't seem to. Jimmy watched his father a short while after the split and noticed he seemed to deal with his mother being gone in a different way. His father would throw himself into his work even after sundown. His father would still be taking on extra work, and there was even times when he locked himself away in his office. His father had become a workaholic and barely found time to sleep. To Jimmy, it felt like his perfect world had just toppled over and was rolling away from him. He thought often about his life and how he felt, but what could he really do? He was doing everything he could to grasp reality and accept that the split had caused a great deal of aftermath for him. Although his mother lived outside of Mansfield, he contacted her weekly. Jimmy ran around often to keep his mind from it all, running around with his best friend Jesse. Jesse lived in Mansfield also, but lived a mile down from him on the same road. Jimmy's bedroom was on the third floor. It was the attic. It had been his room since he was eleven. He was no different than most other teenagers and enjoyed having his personal freedom. He didn't have a girlfriend, but appreciated his privacy as much as anyone else. The attic was cold during winter months, but he did whatever it took to keep it warm, managing with the space heater and the old comforter his grandmother had given him as a present. She had stitched it for him when he was younger. It was given to him on his 13th birthday, which disappointed him at the time. Its use was much more understandable now. The house Jimmy lived in was old and had a long history. It was made of stone and was built in the early 18th century sitting along Shaw Road on five countries surrounding acres of land. It was once owned by his great-great-grandmother. Before her, it was her great-grandparents as well. She left it to them after she passed and at times he still heard noises that seemed to be her spirit but nobody really knew. Jimmy had the feeling his grandmother still walked the halls there even after her death. It didn't freak him out much, though. Noises came with old houses. At least that's what he was told. Jimmy grew up spending his early childhood there on weekends with her, and he wouldn't have changed it for nothing. His grandmother would teach him about the ghostly history that embedded itself there, and also around the town since she arrived there from Scotland. 
Jimmy got up from the bed looking towards the window. He reached for the blinds to pull them up to take a swift look outside to see if it was raining yet or if it had begun. Shockingly, the crow that once stood there on the box was now gone. He thought about it again, but didn't think much else other than it must have gotten spooked earlier. Jimmy didn't have much to do thinking of some ideas as he sat there on the bed thinking about giving Jesse a ring. What to do, he thought. There wasn't much to do and he hadn't applied for any work there because jobs were scarce around Mansfield. Jimmy wished that his family could have picked another side of the world to live in, but they didn't. So he was there with his father until he grew old enough to decide another place. He thought often about his life and part of him felt his life sucked, but he knew deep down he could have been a lot worse. Jimmy decided not to call Jesse that evening. He'd call him tomorrow, or actually see him in class the next day. He laid back down, still on the bed, almost drifting off as quick as he hit the covers. He couldn't understand why, but he was feeling drained as he relaxed there. It felt nice to let go. His eyes shut heavy, clamping down, bringing him into another world. It started with the fluorescent blue sky, and then he seen his parents there. They weren't fighting. They seemed happy and were holding hands on a bridge. He'd never seen them like this, and it was really good to see them getting along and looking so excited to be there on the bridge. The water underneath was rushing by under the bridge, causing medium-sized waves to wrinkle and crash now. Jimmy's parents still looked as if there couldn't have been a better moment in their lives other than this one. He could see his father whispering into his mother's ear, but he couldn't make out what he was saying. It was too distant. His mother looked at his father as her face had now turned. She was quickly going into a fit as Jimmy watched, but was unable to help matters. The argument had escalated as he watched. Jimmy could see the dreadful look upon his mother's face, but he couldn't do anything. His body wasn't there, and he couldn't move. Trying to fill his body and legs, but ending up with nothing. He couldn't see himself in the strange nightmare. Jimmy stood there as his father grabbed his mother's arms, trying to calm her down, but she fought back even harder. Again, the water beneath was getting much more frantic and began to surge, causing it to crash angrily. The wave shook underneath again this time, a bit harder as it exploded over the bridge, having them both covered in wetness. Jimmy watched there nervously at both of them as they were now wet but continued to shove each other around. The fighting was escalating and beginning to worry Jimmy, but what could he do? Everything that was once loving and caring has now become a faded memory. He didn't want to be in this dream anymore. He tried to wake up but couldn't. His eyelids fought back, keeping him in his self-hell, a place he may have created in his own brain. The breakup has given him twisted ideas and almost terrified him to the point he wanted to scream. Jimmy was unable to do anything, then suddenly, the waves jumped out from underneath the bridge and opened up into two gigantic burning arms of fire. They opened up like the devil's tongue, ripping his parents into the water. All he can see was his parents reaching out of the water and screaming for him to help them. But he couldn't. He couldn't move. He was stuck watching. The water was now darkened into a black, oily sludge as it began to boil. He caught the last glance of their hands reaching for him until they disappeared, dissolving into the murky depths of the underworld. At that second, he could see a light come from off the bridge, shining down into the scene where both had just been sucked into the deepness. Jimmy heard an unknown voice of a woman calling for him, but couldn't see him. They must have thought it was him that washed under the waves. The voice of a woman kept calling his name while he stood there, unable to call out or move. He was lost to the world. Jimmy then heard his name once again. Jimmy. With a sudden jolt, he felt his body shake till he opened his eyes again. He thought he was still having a nightmare, but it was over now. His eyes wouldn't allow him to see as the room was too bright for them to adjust. Jimmy then opened his eyes to see in front of himself, only seeing the bookcase and his collection of comics and nudie mags stacked on top. What the hell was going on? He couldn't figure it out. He was awakened, but nobody was with him in his room. He took another look from left to right and see nothing out of the ordinary. Jimmy felt he was being watched by something or someone leaving him, 
still a bit nervous. He was skeptical of things he couldn't validate himself, and he didn't believe much in the supernatural. His room felt dreary now, and the nightmare of his parents gave him chills and being there alone. He noticed outside it was getting dark fast, and the clouds he seen earlier were now pitch black, and he could sense rain. He walked out of his room to head downstairs, but suddenly he heard thunder and knew he was right. His father was gone still, and he was alone for now. His father's work area was to the right of him as he stepped onto the floor below the stairs. The office was vacant, and it would be a long night for him. He decided to make something simple for dinner and was getting a pain in his gut needing something to eat. He went into the kitchen and fixed a quick sandwich, opening up the cupboard to see if they had any chips. He could see they didn't. He then grabbed the grape soda from the fridge and decided eating alone he would take his plate to the outside deck with him. He would sit on the front deck and enjoy the weather until it started to rain. He could use the good breeze, and the wind hitting his face always felt good this time of the year. His father hadn't bought an AC, so they didn't have air conditioning. Jimmy thought to himself they had to be the only ones without any. Jimmy swung on the porch eating and swinging, sipping his soda and thinking about school. The porch was lit by a small light that hung above him, allowing him to see enough. The porch deck wasn't enclosed, it had those old country house beams in the front, but it was open for the most part. Jimmy noticed the bread he used to make a sandwich and had, it had become stale, but it was dinner. He continued to eat and swing, lifting his feet up as he rocked. He could hear the thunder, but still no rain, just the silence of the night between each sound of clashing thunder. Evening hours like this made the whole yard look much more different than what they seemed during the daytime. The ground looked dark, and he could barely make out what everything was out there. Trees looked like bodies hanging from ropes, and the sky looked like an old man's twisted face giving him a strange, angry look right back. He thought about that for a minute until he felt a drop of rain hit the tip of his finger as he finished the last bite on his plate. It wasn't raining yet. It seemed like it was taking its good old time getting there. He didn't mind, though. He wasn't ready to go in just yet. He started humming the song he was listening to earlier on his earbuds. It was clamped around his brain like vice grips. As he hummed away, he just rocked on, the swing feeling at ease now. The sky flashed suddenly and lit above the world like a lamp. It was a jolt of lightning telling him to ready himself to go indoors. The warning wasn't enough to push him or get him up. He was in a relaxed state there swinging and humming. Jimmy peered outwards into the night. Suddenly, something in the darkness went thrashing above his head and smacked uncontrollably into the house inches behind him. Jimmy grew startled and couldn't see what it was. What it could have been terrified him. It must have touched him somehow, because he could feel something dripping from the back of his neck as he jumped up from the swing. The porch light was on, but it was kind of shadowy behind the swing, so we couldn't see what it was. He could hear a fluttering sound, almost like papers, being brushed against something, but he couldn't get a close enough look. He reached his hand to see what was on his neck, noticing there was blood on his fingers. He quickly used his jeans to dry them. What was the noise? He was worried it was a bat or something. They had those around there, but could it be? Jimmy crept up along the swing to get another look and find out what had just touched his neck, leaving its blood splattered on him. He ran back into the house and grabbed a small key chain flashlight. Leaving the kitchen drawer still pulled open, he went back out onto the deck. He stood there frozen, keeping his nerves collected. He knelt down and shined it underneath to see what it was. Jesus, he thought. It was the crow from earlier. Could it be the same one, he wondered? How could it be, he thought harder. Something is wrong with this. This is not natural. Deciding to use a branch laying on the deck to pull it out from underneath the swing, he used the one end as if it were a broom and shoved the large bloody crow onto the ground. As the crow hit the ground, it made one last squealing squawk, like before, but much more painful this time. The noise it made was evil and dragged out for a moment, as if evil was nearing him, and the crow knew something greater than he knew. Its wings continued to flutter slowly, its nerves contracted one last time before it gave its last breath before dying off in the night. A force of rain unleashed, 
just then leaving him partially covered in it as it blew in through the porch where there wasn't any sides. He ran inside to warm up and gave the crow no more thought. 